good day everyone thank you again for joining let's open the curtains for today's event today we have hussain with us as the speaker so let's jump into the program if you have any question during the webinar feel free to ask in the zoom chat we will be answering them in the qa part of the webinar hussain please take the limelight Thank you, Nazbul. Hello, everyone. This is Hossein Mahmoud, software engineer of AppScode. Today in this webinar, we will see how to use EKS, IRSA, and Cube to IAM with Stash. So let's see the contents of today's webinar. First, we will see how to set up IRSA. Then we are going to deploy a database using KubeDB and insert some data into it. After that, we are going to backup and restore data using IRSA. Then we will see how to set up Cube to IAM. Then we will backup and restore the data using Cube to IAM. And at the final part, we will uh, have a question and answering session. So let's, let's start with IRSA. So what is IRSA? IRSA basically allows Kubernetes workloads to make use of IAM roles to access AWS resources. Using IRSA, you can associate an IAM role with a Kubernetes service account. This service account can then provide AWS permissions to the containers in any pod that uses that service account. With this feature, you no longer need to provide the uh, extended permissions to the Amazon EKS node. Um, and the node can call AW, uh, AWS APIs without any credential. So now let's see how to set up IRSA. Uh, first, uh, you uh, first you have to create the OIDC identity provider for your cluster, and I have already created it for my cluster. Then you have to create a IAM role, and the proper IAM policy should be attached with it. In our case, we will access the S3 buckets. So this policy should define the access permission for the S3 buckets. And finally, uh, we, are, uh, we have to create a Kubernetes service account and this service account should be annotated with that IAM role. So let's uh, create these resources using this command and this command will uh, basically uh, creates a, a bucket user service account and in the demo name space and it also create a, a, a bucket user role in AWS with the policy bucket accessor attached to it and also this command annotate this service account with that bucket user role. So I have already created this bucket accessor policy in AWS. Let me show you that. So this is uh, my bucket accessor policy and it has the permission to access the S3 buckets. So here you can see it. Now let's uh, execute this command. Let's wait a bit for this command to be completed. Let's wait a bit more. Yeah. So the command has been executed successfully. Now let me show you the service account. It has been created. Uh, let me show you the service account it just created. You can see the bucket user service service account has been created. Now let me just des describe that.
you can see the annotation has been added. So this command also created a, a, a IAM role, a, which is bucket user. So let me show you that in AWS. So here is the IAM role and you can see the bucket accessor policy has been attached to it. So the setup for IRSC is done. Now we have to deploy a database using KubeDB. So I'm going to use MyDB standalone database and here is the YAML for the standalone database instance. So let's create it. So I have already deployed this standalone database in my cluster. So now let's um, insert some data into it. So let's create a database first. the database company has been created now let's uh, create a table so i have just created the employees table now let's insert some data into this table so let's uh, see the rows from the table so there are two rows available in this table now let's take a backup of this data using a stash. So this is our backup flow. User have to create a encryption and encryption secret first, and this encryption secret will be used by stash uh, to encrypt the data in the backend. And then user creates a repository which contains this uh, encryption secret, and the repository also. Uh, contain the bucket name and the prefix uh, or the path where the da uh, backup data will be stored. And uh, then user creates a backup configuration. This backup configuration contains the backup target and uh, the backup schedule, uh, which uh, it defines how frequently a backup will be taken place. Stash operator watches for backup configuration resources. So when it finds a backup configuration, it creates a cron job according to the schedule. And this cron job periodically trigger creates, creates a backup session to trigger a backup. Stash operator watches for backup session also. And when it finds a backup session, it resolves the corresponding add-on. So in this case, uh, the add-on is MariaDB backup. So according to the uh, add-on, it creates a backup job and this backup job uh, gets the uh, connection information for the database from app binding. So using that connection information, it dumps the database and send it to the backend. And finally, it sends the uh, metrics to the stash operator. So now let's prepare our backend. Uh, we have to create the encryption secret first, and then we are going to create the repository and we have provided uh, the bucket name here and also the prefix, which basically defines the path where the backup will be restored inside the bucket. And here I have provided the secret name. So let's create these resources. So the encryption secret has been created. Now let's create the repository. So the repository has been created. So our backend has been prepared. Now let's see the backup configuration object. Here I have provided the bucket user service account which I have uh, I have created earlier, and this service account will be used by Stash to uh, connect to the uh, S3 uh, bucket. 
so here I have provided the repository name, which is S3 repo. And uh, I have also provided the target. Uh, in our case, it is sample MariaDB. Uh, so let's create this backup configuration object. So the backup configuration has been created and uh, it will uh, trigger a backup periodically. But uh, if you want to take an instant backup, you can use uh, stash CLI. So let's uh, use stash CLI to take our instant backup. So a backup session has been created. Now let's wait for it to be completed. So you can see the backup has been succeeded. Now let's simulate a disaster scenario by uh, deleting the data from the database. So before simulating the disaster scenario, I have to uh, pause the backup because it may take uh, another backup after deleting the data. So let's uh, pause it first. So I can pause the, pause the backup using stash CLI. So the backup has been paused. Yeah. So now let's uh, delete the database. So the database has been deleted. If I show all the databases. So you can see the uh, company database has been deleted. Now let's restore this data. This is our restore flow. Uh, in, in that case, user creates a restore session and a restore session contains the target of the application where the data will be restored. And stash operator watches for restore session. When it uh, finds a restore session, it resolves the corresponding uh, restore add-on. So in that case, it is MariaDB restore and the operator uh, creates a restore job according to the uh, restore add-on. And uh, the restore job gets the connection information for the database from the app binding. And it gets the backend information from the repository. and uh, it uh, connects uh, to the backend using that backend info and gets uh, or download the data. And finally, uh, it insert the data, downloaded data into the database. And then it uh, sends the metrics to the stash operator. So this is our uh, restore session YAML. And here I have provided the service account name similarly. So it will be used by the restore job to restore the data. And uh, similarly, I have also provided the repository name and uh, the target app binding, which is sample MariaDB. And in the rules section, I have provided the snapshot latest. So it will basically restore the last backup data. Uh, okay, so let's create this restore session. So the restore session has been created. Now let's wait for it to be completed. You can see the restore session has been succeeded. Now let's verify that the data has been restored. So first let's show the databases. You can see the company database has been restored. Now let's see the uh, table employees. You can see the data is there. So our register is successful.
now let's see what cube to iam is cube to iam lets you attach iam rows to the running ports in your kubernetes cluster Cube to IAM intercept calls to the API and instead of authenticating directly, it will assume the role that has been assigned to the ports in the cluster via annotations and respond with the temporary credentials. In this manner, your pods uh, get the access from their annotated roles and the only permissions needed for your nodes is the ability to assume the roles your pods use. So, let's see how to set up cube to iam first you have to uh, install cube to iam in your cluster as a daemon set i have already installed it then uh, you can see there are two iam role here first one is for the kubernetes node and the second one is for accessing the s3 buckets and this kubernetes node role will assume this uh, a role for accessing S3 buckets. So uh, this role should contain the assume policy and and this role uh, should uh, should be attached with the policy that defines the access permission for the S3 buckets. And also this um, IAM role uh, should have the trust policy uh, so that this uh, node role can assume this role. And finally, uh, we have to provide the proper annotations uh, to the uh, to the pod, which is gonna uh, uh, make the API call. So in our case, our backup or restore job will make that call, and we have to annotate it uh, properly. So um, I have already configured it in the AWS. So let me show you that. Okay, so this is the role that uh, my uh, Kubernetes uh, no node is using. And here you can see I have already attached the Azure policy here. So you can see um, it can assume the role bucket accessor. So let me show you the bucket accessor role. So the bucket accessor role is attached with the bucket accessor policy and this bucket accessor policy basically uh, defines the permission for accessing the S3 buckets. Here you can see it. And also uh, let's see the trust relationship. Here I have provided the uh, role of the Kubernetes node. So the this node role can assume this role. So this is how you have to set up the cube to IAM in your cluster. Uh, now let's uh, see the backup configuration YAML uh, to take the backup. So here uh, we have uh, provided the uh, annotations through the uh, runtime settings uh, section. And here I have provided the role, which is bucket accessor. And then uh, I have also provided the repository, S3 repo. So basically I'm using the same repository I have created earlier. And also I, I am providing the uh, target. In our case, it is a sample MyDB, which is the same database uh, we have uh, deployed earlier. So now uh, let's insert another data into the database and then take backup of that data. So let's insert another row in the employees table. So let's uh, see the rows from this table. So you can see there are three rows. Uh, now let's take backup of this data. So first let's um, uh, let's update our backup configuration file. Now let's um, update the backup configuration.
So our backup configuration has been updated for the cube to IAM. Now uh, let's uh, trigger another instant backup using uh, stash CLI. So let's wait for it to be completed. You can see the backup session has been succeeded. Now let's um, uh, simulate another disaster scenario. And after that, we will restore the data. So let's drop the database company. So the database has been deleted. Now let's check uh, that there is no data. So no data exists. Now let's restore our data. This is our restore session YAML uh, for restoring the data. And similarly, I have provided the annotation here using the pod annotation section in the runtime settings. And uh, similarly, the bucket accessor role uh, have been provided. And here is the repository, uh, which is S3 repo, uh, which is the same repository as before. And the target is similarly sample MariaDB database. And we are going to take, uh, we are going to restore the latest backup. So let's create this restore session object. Okay, so I have to delete the previous restore session first. So the restore session has been deleted. Now let's create it again. So the restore session has been created. Now let's uh, wait for it to be completed. You can see the restore session has been succeeded. Now let's verify that our data has been restored. You can see all the rows are here. And so our restore has been succeeded. So that's all from my side. So if you have any question, you can ask. Thanks for the presentation. It was a great yeah. presentation. Okay, you are welcome. So with this, we are concluding the webinar today. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit www.epscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day. Thank you.